Hey everybody, welcome back for another video with Michael Pena today. Um, for all you millennials out there, you guys will know him from Ant-Man. For all you uh, older folks out there, a shooter would be a good one to look at. So I'm um, really happy to have him here share his experiences and stories of how he got to where he is today, um, the process he went through. So maybe we can start with, you know, give us a little bit of background about yourself, how you grew up, where you grew up, what, what got you into acting, we can kind of go from there. Well, I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, and um, where there was no golf. And I, um, I, went, I grew up like in a, in a poor neighborhood, to be honest, but I was going uh, to a prep school. And so it was really interesting that, that, you know, that difference in life where I'm going to prep school during the day and then I have to ride the bus for like an hour. It was the city bus at that. And so, and then I get home and, you know, there's like, there's pandemonium, there's all that, you know, all the sirens queued up perfectly. Um, a normal occurrence. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was like that all the time. And, um, and then I'd, I'd, I'd go on repeat, you know, go back and see kids in Corvettes and just like be amazed. And I, uh, I, I didn't know that that life existed, to be honest with you. I thought it was just in, in, in movies and television. Um, and then so I, I, I wanted to do something with my life. And I started working at the, at the Board of Trade, uh, in a bank at the Board of Trade in, in Chicago, downtown. Um, and then my best friend's mom actually said, um, you know, you're good at imitating people because I used to imitate, you know, the teachers for like 25 cents. And when you're broke and you can do like eight of them, you know, that's two bucks. I can buy myself, I can upgrade to a good turkey sandwich. So, uh, the kids are giving you 25, 25 cents to imitate cents. the teacher. Yeah. Big like, class. Exactly. So, <laughs> and I used to just do it for fun, you know, and, and, and it was, uh, it was like, like I told you before, you know, because we lived in such a bad neighborhood, my mother and father, they wanted us to stay inside as much as possible. So they got cable, you, we could watch all the shows that we wanted, you know, and we would run around and, and just, you know, create havoc inside, you know, the, the apartment that we lived in. And they'd rather us do that than, than go outside and potentially get shot. Right. And so I, I went to this open call, you know, my best friend's mom uh, told me to go. And I, you know, the producer said, can you act? I said, nah, we're gonna find out. <laughs> he thought I was being a smart ass, but I'm like, I, I really wasn't. I, you know, they, they, these open calls, they have like 3,000 kids try out for a couple parts, and nine times out of 10, it's just to do, you know, just to have extras or whatever. Gotcha. And, uh, and you know, I got this thing called a callback, which is, you know, the producers come into town, and then, and then I got through that phase, and then the director came into town. Then I read with other people, and then I auditioned a bunch of times. Just for one role. For one, for one of the roles, and it was a, um, it's called a, uh, to serve with love, but it was part two with Sidney Portier. I didn't get the part. Instead, I, uh, I, I was an extra, you know, in in the um, in the TV movie, but it was great. It was I got to spend two months uh, with the with this great actor, and I watched the first movie, and I thought it was awesome. And uh, uh, I think I think it was with uh, with Lou Lulu, uh, the first one. I think the elder folks will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I certainly don't know what you're talking yeah, about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're too young, dude. Uh, and uh, and I, I was just amazed. And two weeks after I, I I stopped that, I finished filming that. I went to Los Angeles, and I said, screw it. I might, might as well just go for it. I really love this acting thing. How old were you at that time? I was 19. Gotcha. You know, I'm in my 40s now, so it was it was a long time ago. Um, and so I gave myself uh, like three or three months to make it. I had, you know, That's a, little, it, eh? a little bit of money. I didn't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm young, you know, I'm like, I, I didn't know the way the world, you know, worked out. And sure enough, like in the, in the, in like, I think like, just as I was running out of money, I booked a really small role in something, and uh, people around me and the agents and everything, they're like, "Yeah, you, you should, you should work on it. You have something there. Um, it's, it's potential, but like you have to refine it, and then you have to, you have to see what you're good at. You have to be good at something, right? In, in terms of acting, and right. it took me a while to find out. Would, would someone in your shoe at that spot have agents? Is it normal to have agents when you're just trying to make it, or were you just? Getting whatever you could get. You know, it's funny. I I I got two jobs without an agent, just by open calls. 
So basically, like on the radio, they're like, hey, welcome to WGCI 107.5, but we play the hits. There's a movie coming in town where you know, they're looking for auditions and people for this. And I was like, oh, great. So I just looked in the newspaper or on the radio. Um, and that was normal in Los Angeles for that to happen. I thought, you know, and, and then somebody told me I should get an agent. I was like, I don't want to give away 10%. <laughs> Why do I give 10%? He's like, no, you get way more jobs. Uh, and I was such an idiot. I was, uh, I was like, okay, I'll meet an agent. And then I, I can't believe the audacity that I had when I was a kid. I'm like, why should I hire you? And then they're like, I got like one scene in a movie, you know, or two scenes. You said whatever. that to the agent. Yeah, to the agent. He's like, okay, well, I mean, I don't know. Why should I work with an agent? I remember the lady was like, I'm sorry? And it's like, well, I mean, what, what, what is the benefit? Because I, I think I'm going to work. I mean, I got jobs without an agent. And they're like, I can't believe it. She thought I was joking. But I, really, I, I told her, I was like, I just really don't know. And then she understood that uh, I just really didn't know. She took you pretty good. And she, and she, she hired me. That's awesome. Or, or she, she took me on as a client. How long was that relationship on for? I think about, I think about less than a year. Um, you know, I, I, I had bigger dreams, you know. I had um, aspirations. I, I wanted to be successful. Like, I wanted to be, I thought it was going to be on a TV show. Like, I, you know, Bubba Watson said something that was really interesting when he won the Masters. He's like, my dreams never went this far. And where I am now, it, they never went this far. Wow. You know, so now I, I have to kind of think of new dreams. You know, like, what, what, what else do I want in life? Um, I'm happy, but I, I don't like the feeling of content. Gotcha. You know, being content with something. So, um, but what, that's what's great about artistry, like being an artist, like, you know, you, you can really push the limits with reality and imagination. And uh, I'd love to, to star in some really cool movies that I really am proud of, that are my, my aesthetic. Um, but how to make those into reality, you know, that, that's the challenge. Right. So that's where I'm going into now, right. which is really exciting, um, you know. So how do you make that into reality? Like what, what was your thought process from, you know, you guys had a one-year relationship, you were, you were just getting gigs, how does that, evolve into where you are now and then where is the next five ten years for you how does that keep evolving what do you have to do to keep evolving yeah well with the old agent what happened is that uh i wasn't very happy with this person so i'm like i, I said it's okay i'm i'm getting less auditions with you than i am without you really eh? i said i'm just gonna I'm, i don't like waiting around and i didn't know that you should sometimes wait around you know um and so i I just went searching and basically I sat around my headshots, which had like two credits. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're supposed to list off your credits and then, um, you know, what your interests are. And I was like, I was like wrestling and dancing and golf and blah, blah, blah. I read this book and that book. And they're like, what is, kind of, it was the worst resume ever. <laughs> Cause you know, um, long walks in the park, whatever, like all that stuff. And, and so, once I landed at an agency, I just kept, it's one, the, the business is different because there's different kind of agencies. There's agencies for kids, which I looked young, you know, when I was 19. Um, and then there's, there's medium sized agencies that basically uh, play the numbers game where they'll have, like say you went into an audition, um, they'll have literally 20 guys that look almost exactly like you. You're, you're filming in and you're like, wow, this guy could, Oh, wow, we all look pretty, pretty, Interesting. you know, everyone's like six foot, you know, Asian, um, probably like shaved, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing how this, this happens. And, um, and, and so pretty much they play like one of the 20 they're hoping is going to get it. And it's for smaller roles in TV shows and stuff like that. And then you go to another agency, you know, that hires, uh, with people that have already proven themselves, which is with who I am I with see. now. I yeah. See. And so you have to go through that. And I'm with an agency now, CAA, where it's like they call you, you don't call them, you I know, see. kind of thing. And it took a, a long time to, to get to that. But um, it's basically kind of like how you guys did in TXG, you know what I mean? With, uh, uh, you know, people start liking what your stuff, right. you, you have a different angle for your content. Um, you know, people find it interesting. And sometimes it's the luck of the draw. You know, there's guys that work just as hard as I did. Um, but for some reason, it's a blessing that they like my stuff, you know, so, um, 
it, it, and it also keeps you grounded thinking that way, you know, right. that, you, that it's a blessing that you have what you have and the way you have it. Right. Was there, was there a moment that you were like, holy shit, like a can't believe I got that? Yeah, I remember um, I got this movie. Um, there was a couple of movies that, that did that. Like, you know, I, I did Crash about 15 years ago uh -huh. and it won the Oscar. Was that one of your bigger, first bigger roles you had in, earlier in your career? Or? That was actually like my first real role. Gotcha. You know, where I, instead of like me saying like, he's over there, you know, and trying to make something of that, it's a, it's a real part, you know, real living, real person. And, um, and not just part of like moving the plot, you know what I mean? Saying um, it, it's a person that's like had his own storyline, his own arc. That was my first time. And then right after that, I got World Trade Center opposite Nicolas Cage wow. in an Oliver Stone movie. And I was almost trying to talk Oliver Stone out of it. And I was like, listen, dude, I've never, I've never even started in a commercial. <laughs> you know, like, are, are you sure? And he's like, you're the guy, you're the guy. I was like, and my agents were just screaming at me, like, "What are you doing? Don't try! I, did you try to talk up? <laughs> why? Why did you? Why did you yeah. try to talk yourself out? Because I, I never had the, I didn't have the experience, you know. And it, it's a lot. Like I, I worked on Crash for like four days, you know. World Trade Center was like a seventy million dollar movie, and it was very big. It was with a studio, and you know, there's a lot of executives and. And you know that every day it's like a million, I don't know how much it is, but it's like a million dollars to shoot. Right. And the sets were ginormous and it was with a huge movie star. Um, and not only that, but there was more dialogue, more scenes, more, and I, things that I, I didn't know I was gonna, I was gonna be, you know, involved in, you know? Right. So it was, it was pretty amazing. And I was, I was a nervous wreck, but I just had to be more prepared like we talked about earlier, right, right. you have to be sometimes more prepared knowing that you're going to be nervous. But if you're very, very prepared, then like the nerves take a backseat because right. you're so prepared. Right. So maybe walk us to like, how do you prepare? Like, you know, you're going to be nervous. How do you prepare yourself to, yeah. to kill it? it and, but uh, by the way, like some, like if you're well prepared, the, the nerves kind of change into performance. Like it, it's called the performance energy where you're like, everything becomes a little bit you know, bigger and, and just like, uh, just like it is in golf, you know, when you're, um, you know, in a tournament, uh, you know, and you're on the first tee and you normally hit that three wood, like, you know, 260 or whatever. And all of a sudden it goes 280. Right. That adrenaline, you know, if you're prepared enough, you're like, Oh, this is cool. Interesting. You know? So the nerves are like evolving into performance energy for you. Yeah. Because you got to be ahead of the nerves, right? You know, you have to, you have to be well prepared. Like Tiger Woods talks about it perfectly. Like he was, he was nervous at times, but he just know that he hit it so much and his focus was so good. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the people that I looked up to, like as far as performance goes, um, where it's there, but like, no, I, I got this game to go for. And it's, it's, I, I know it's there, I know it's there, but I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish this. So for me, it starts with the script. Right. I'll read it before I start rehearsing it. I'll read it, like just how you do, like how, you want people to, you know, go through it slowly, and then you're really quick at adapting. You're like, oh, okay, for you, it's better when you go through a movement to really figure it out and feel it, you know. So the basics have to be in, and and so the basics for us is story. Gotcha. So really know the story, really really know the story and what it means to you, and then I start breaking it down with different arcs, like you know, and it's easy with that. You're like, oh, with my mother in this movie. Um, you know, we're always fighting, but then all of a sudden here, you know, we make up and I was like, okay, cool. So like, then you look at that storyline then you look at the storyline with my girlfriend. Um, and then you look at the storyline with, you know, with the, what I'm trying to accomplish in the movie, you know, I'm trying to get my kid back, you know, taken is he's trying to get his kid back, Right. you know, in world trade center, I'm trying to survive, you know, I'm trying to save my own life. Um, you know, sometimes they're as simple as that. And then you just you know, break everything down. And when you really know it, then I start rehearsing some things, but I read it, read it, read it. And then I don't even say it out loud for a while. And then, and then once I really know and it's getting into your bones, that's when you start, you know, just saying it out loud slowly. Right. Really. It's more of the time that you spend with your preparation uh, than it is trying to immediately be good. Uh, it's okay with like failing, you of know, and, and being not that great. You know, and 
I hire kids all the time, like who, like anybody who's a, a local theater person or whatever. Hey, you want to run lines? And I'll run lines like eight hours a day, like a regular job. That's cool. And they probably leave, like it'll be at their theater with, you know, whatever. And they probably leave saying, well, like, that guy's not very good. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I'm trying different things, you know? Gotcha. I'm trying different things. And then, and then, but you know where you're going. And then pretty soon the options start becoming a little bit more linear and you can feel you can feel like with your objective like when we were working i was like oh i want you to finish here and i was like oh it's something clicked I was like oh yeah i can get there but i you know and then all the movements kind of made sense so at least the basics right. of it you know you want to i, I want to know where i'm going to end up you know and then i can i can plan accordingly like all per like targets and my goals and everything can be aligned with that end game Right. So what, what helps you decide, like, as you're whittling it down from all these different variations to, like, the last few, like, how do you whittle it down? Um, it, it's basically, uh, it, first, it really helps to know the genre of it, right? Like in Ant-Man, for instance, right? It's a, it's a, it's a big Marvel movie, but at the same time, it's, it's like a heist movie, right? So it's ding ding. Right. Any choice that didn't go with that, it didn't make it into the movie. Gotcha. So I was trying another character. It was funny, but um, I was trying another character in rehearsals and stuff, and they're like, "You're doing great." And I was like, uh, "I don't think it's, I don't think it's right. It doesn't flow." Right. You're playing. So you're still playing Luis, but as a different kind of Luis. Yeah, and then we were auditioning other people. You know what I mean? So we were reading with them, and uh, I was like, mm, "Number one, it's not fast enough. It's not funny enough. It doesn't move it." And then a day before filming. I got the idea. I was like, "Oh, maybe I can do this guy, who talks really fast." And I was talking about, you know, I was really happy, but you know, he has this kind of cadence, which is uh -huh. really cool. And I'm like, "Oh my God!" You know, he's like, "Da ba da ba da ba da ba oh ba da ba da ba." To me, that cadence was funny, right. and I know somebody like that. And especially, he was always smiling. He's like, oh, "I know what you're saying," you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, that guy. I was like, and then I can envision him in the entire movie, and then pushing the plot along too, and you know, people coming. To, along with him uh, on the ride, right. you know, along with Paul Rudd. Because uh, it's, it's a different job. When you're starring in a movie, you want to tell the story as best you can, but you're in the story. And when you're playing a supporting part, um, kind of like a caddy in a way, you're trying, to, you're trying to move the lead actor. You're trying to make him react to things. Like, get away from me, you know, like elicit a response and be the gas pedal, you know, in a way. So you have this guy that's just walking along and then somebody's trying to push him and he's like, hey, and then push, you know, literally all these, you're, 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 you're making problems for him, obstacles for him to go along. And, you know, that's why there's like a villain, for instance, you know, who he's got to, like, he's trying to accomplish something, but then he's offering a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you resist and sometimes you help and sometimes you push and uh, just like a caddy would in a way, you know, help out the, the, the lead person. So... Um, it again, it, it helps with understanding your post. Okay, right. this one I'm a supporting part. Um, you know, when I did Narcos, it was a little bit slower of a burn. You know, because you're starring in it. Um, I was starring in my, my portion of it, um, and so you know, you you, you want to bring people along, and hopefully, hopefully, you have really good supporting actors. Right, um, right. And you want to hire great supporting actors. You know. Right. So like going back to to how the idea hit you like the day before you guys were filming for Ant-Man. Like, is it normal for it to just hit you like that? How did it hit you? No, a lot of times it hit, like, when I, when I want to do a movie, it's because I get an impulse of like, oh, this would be great, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I write it down and, you know, my wife will be, you know, just looking over and she's so great. She, what she'll do is like, you, are you hungry, honey? I'm like, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, babe, I am. Uh -huh. You know, because I'll. But forget. you're just like scribbling things down. Scribbling, and I'm in a zone, and I, you know, I got my man cave, you know, where I got my my simulator. Right, that's um, cool. But I can walk around and sometimes just swing. But now I'll, I'll swing swing more like this, um, and uh, you know, just ideas, ideas, because it, it's 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 it's. I'm gonna make an analogy with golf sometimes. Like uh -huh. what you got to do sometimes, like you know how you play. And you're like, you know, you don't got it for those four or five uh -huh. whole stretches, regardless of how good you are. But then you really feel it. And you're like, that's when you're aggressive. 
you know, and that's when I, I, I'm really aggressive in writing down recording notes and stuff like that. And so sometimes our main job, which I'm sure happens to a lot of different professions, is just to get there, just to get, get you in, into the, your own rehearsal spot, your own creative spot, and knowing that like if you, if you go at it for four hours, two of those hours are gonna be good. Maybe three if you're lucky. It, it might be one in the, in the beginning, you, those second two hours kind of lag, and then you finish strong with another hour, you know what I mean? And the, the ideas really come, really come, and, and who knows where they come from, but you just write those down, and, and it's basically the hot hand rule. Gotcha. You know, you just go with the hot hand. That's cool. So do you ever ask, you know, when, when they're casting you, right? Do you ever ask them why they picked you? All the time. Yeah. All the time. I, um, you got to find out what people need and want, you right. know, in a story. And I'm always talking to the writer first, you know. Before the producer, before the director, before anyone else. Well, I mean, like the most, I should say no. the most, because uh, sometimes a producer hires a writer, right? And then, and then the, the writer knows a little bit more into their, the, you know, the, the different things that they put out because they have a, a backstory with them. So I, I'm always asking the, the writer a ton, ton of questions. And it's great because it's almost like what you, like the movies that you see is like, you can see a bunch of mountains and stuff, you know, and, and, and you know, it's all on water. But what you don't see is that like there's this whole big other mountain, you know, underwater that you don't see. Right, so I'm interested in that, right. so that this is easier. Gotcha. You know, and that's where the writer comes in. That's where the writer comes in because he's the one who wrote the story. He knows, you know. Sometimes they write a streamline of consciousness, um, where they're basically like, I don't know what's happening, you know, and he, they're just describing whatever's in the, and, and then and then you ask them why, and they a lot of times they're like, I don't know, and then and then a, a week later they're like, you know what, when I was a kid, blah blah blah. You know, because some images would just come up mm -hmm. in your in your head, and they'll tell you, and they share something with you, and you're like, wow, and it breaks it open for you, because you want to make, you want to create a great performance. You want, you know, I guess great is for you know the audience to you know decide, but you want to be good. Mm -hmm. You want to be effective. I think that's a better word. You want to be a, a, an effective performer so that you know people can feel, can laugh, and hope and cry or be moved, and you want to move move them. In a way. Gotcha. So when you're going back to World Trade Center and that was, like you said, you were talking yourself out of it almost. That <laughs> yeah. sounded like that was probably like your, one of your first big, big, big role. Like, why did they take a chance on you? Like, like you said, yeah, no, yeah, no experience, but why would he take a chance on you? Yeah, I remember I talked to Oliver Stone about it. He said, uh, he said, you're the guy. I mean, you even trying to get out of it is the guy. You're the guy. <laughs> and he just, you know, because we had a. Um, you know, I came from sports, you know, I was a sports guy. Um, I didn't grow up like doing theater and stuff like that. So I didn't know, I was like a, a little bit rough around the edges. And that's what he was looking for, gotcha. you know? Um, I was like, are you sure you want to hire me, man? And I was like, ah. I'm like, I have no experience. And he's like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Cause the guy, once I, I went to, you know, I lived with him and his family for like, or I, I went to go visit for like a week. And he's like, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? He was a little rough around the ridges, and I'm still friends with him, Will Jimeno. And, and so then I understood, I'm like, oh, he likes that aspect of it. Okay, cool. And then so that was important to just ask why he would hire me. Interesting. Yeah. So how, how did Marvel come along? So Marvel came along, there was another director attached to it, and he had seen a, a movie that is out on Netflix now. It's called Observe and Report, and I can't, my, my wife's like one of my wife's favorite characters, and it was a smaller character in the movie. And basically, I, uh, uh, I play this really kind of weird character from the streets, and he's like, I really loved you in that movie, and I wrote a part for you. I said, okay, cool. He left the project, um, but then they, they still wanted me to be part of it, so I was like, okay, cool. Um, but that one was a character, you know what I mean? It wasn't like me as a person, it was gotcha. another character. So I knew that they wanted a kind of a character that I could, I could come up with. So I was scrambling and I was attached to it for maybe a year or maybe half a year, something, a long time. Um, and I, 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 I didn't know how, like I couldn't come up with anything until the night before. Interesting. But what was funny about the Marvel thing is I was doing a movie in England 
and it was it was Fury. I was doing the movie Fury, and I uh, I remember saying like, oh great, if they want to send me the script, fine, it'd be perfect. They're like, yeah, they can get the script for you tomorrow night. I'm like, great, awesome. I got home after a long, I mean, it was it, it's a it's a long shoot, you know, the Fury. It was with Brad Pitt. It was I I thought it was a really cool movie, David Ayer directed, and you know the guy gives me the script. And I said, can I help you, man? He's like, I'm just going to stay outside. I was like, you're going to stay out? What do you mean you're going to stay outside? He's like, I'm just going to stay outside. Like you're in, you're in your hotel room? Yeah, he, he literally stood right outside my hotel room until I read the script. And I said, well, I'm probably only going to read half of it. And he's like, yeah, then I'll just take it from you. Come back tomorrow. And so it took me like three nights to read the script because I'm studying for the other movie. And I... I but Marvel's really like they're they they you know they keep it uh, they keep it pretty sealed pretty, right uh, they keep a tight <laughs> ship right there because they don't now I understand because if you know the ending or anybody right. knows the ending or it gets leaked or something like imagine Endgame you know like everybody knowing the plot they're gonna lose they're gonna lose money right right you're like I already know anyway um, and they don't want that to happen so I was that was my first brush with Marvel being like wow so like you finish. He takes it back. See you tomorrow. Yeah. And then I read another 40 pages, and then he comes back. And then I read another 40 pages, and I was like, thanks a lot. And I had to, not only that, but I had, I had to sign, give him baby pictures, my, you know, my thumbprint. Like, no, I'm just kidding. But I, 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 I did. I had, you know, it was, it was, a, he was right there. And I said, okay. Did but you? that's his job. That's what he does. Right. You know? He goes and he waits. And, and so, but it was. And I was really excited. I mean, I, I actually really liked that first movie and the second movie. I right. I, I liked. I really liked it too. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're they're amazing, man. They're they're really smart people, and um, they're really passionate about filmmaking. And and you can tell, you know what I mean? Because I, you know, me and my son, we read comic books and stuff. So they got the the I guess the essence of like how it is when you read a comic book. You're like, oh, cool. The twists that are right. like seem organic. Right. You Did know. you read the comic books when you were younger before before the Mar before the Marvel came? Yeah, but the first uh, the first ones I read. I mean, I wasn't that much younger. I was like in my twenties. I'm like, um, the preacher. Uh, I don't know if you have no, you read I don't preacher? Know preacher. Preacher is amazing, man. Doug Ellis. It, it's it's really it's really something else. You should read that. I remember I read a couple of them, um, and then I, um, uh, I, I no, I read one, and then I went back and I got the entire. Like you know, the following weekend, and I was broke. I got the entire series, and I, I couldn't stop. You know, you know, you're reading something good, and you're like, dude, just tell me what is going on. Oh, that's funny. You know, and so, um, yeah. Also, the other thing is, I love reading. Reading is 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 super important. You know, my kid, uh, he he just won his readathon. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's in fifth grade too, and so. I think that's really important. Like I wasn't a big reader before I was an actor, um, and that's something that I knew that I was going to have to do I, and do a lot of it. So I was like, you know what? I hate reading. I'm going to learn. Have to learn how to love it. So I now I love it. Now I enjoy it. Um, you know, I have even you know audio books and you know yeah, uh, real book like paper books or whatever. Um, and uh, and now I'm, I love reading, and my you know my wife loves reading, and so does my. my That's son. great. Yeah. Did you did you oh, think you were ever going to get to where you are today when you're 19 year old? You just fresh in LA. Did you ever see yourself never, where you are today? Never, never, never. Well, never. what was your initial like dream goal when you when you first started that? To be honest with you, I just wanted to not worry about money. Gotcha. You know I. I uh, you know, I don't know how much money that would take, especially in LA, because it's really expensive to live there. Um, but it just to just to not have that war, constant worry about money, because I remember I'd living, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had to pay rent. I had to do this. And if I spent here, I know that it would affect this. And I'm like, you know, I can take out 26 bucks, you know, on the weekend, and and you know that it, it was it was taxing and it's like right. you know nerve wracking and. And uh, so I just didn't want to worry about that part. And so it's great because now just my wife worries about that part. Right, right. Yeah. So how long did it take you to get to that goal? Where 17 years. Really, eh? Wow. 17 years. It was progressively getting better, right. progressively getting better. Uh, so these last seven years have been cool. Awesome. But it was, 
24 years, man. Right. Yeah. How do you like live with it for 17 years? You know, like how do you just brush it away that all oh, like, what am I going to do for money this week? Or like, oh, what am I going to do for money? It's tough because, you know, my son was uh, like a year old and I'm, I was stressing out so much, you know, my, my, uh, you know, I wasn't married at the time, but like, uh, you know, my girlfriend, who's not my wife, uh, they kind of didn't know that I was struggling. And so I just, I didn't keep it from them because they didn't ask. <laughs> um, but I definitely, I didn't know what to do. And that's when I got into comedy a little bit. Cause I said, what's being made right now? What's being made? They're like, and they said, my agents said, uh, you know, they're making comedies. So if you can do that, and I was like, oh, I tried comedy. I love comedy. I was told I wasn't funny when I was younger. So I, uh, I was like, how am I going to do this? And then that's when I did the, you know, the, the you know, trial and error. I was like, well, I'm not funny when I play myself, but maybe when I play a character. Um, and then I started doing that. And, I, and that's when I got Observer Report, actually. Um, and then that's when I started doing the comedy a little bit. But it's all, I don't do a lot of comedies because I don't, I don't, they're not funny to me. Right. You know? if, if I sit to, with my brother and he, you know, he tosses on some wacky comedy, he's laughing uncontrollably. He can't take it. And me, I feel like, I don't, I feel like, like I'm not very smart because I just, I'm the guy that goes, I don't get it. You know? So I, I have to be, I got to do the things that I think are funny. Did you ever think about giving up during those 17 years where I was like, let me just get a real job? You know what's funny? I never had a plan B. My plan B was plan A. Gotcha. Which is acting. Which is acting. Um, and there, there's something, there's a strength in that, I think, you know, having, having a plan A and then your plan B is plan A. Um, because I... It seems crazy, but I think I, I think you know even if I was like a always going to just be doing uh, small parts in TV and I can, I know that I could I can live somehow make a living like that you know and and just do theater or something like that and 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 uh, you know just trying to be good and and it, it was such a good pa it was such a passion for me in the beginning right because um, it's all about storytelling and I love stories. Um, that uh, that I, I had to make it work. I just I, I was you knew it was gonna happen. I well I didn't know to the extent that it was gonna happen, but I just, it, more than anything I had to make sure that it happened. Wow. You know that like just to be an actor, a working actor is who I respected, and I right. think I I'm a working actor now. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Is there was there one defining moment? You know, like after those 17 years, you say it took you 17 years to feel like okay, money's not an issue anymore. After that, what was that next big moment that you're like, holy shit, like, I can't believe I just did this? I mean, there was a, a number of them, you know. I, uh, uh, you know, End of Watch was a really good movie for me. Like, I, you know, I worked with Jake Gyllenhaal, who's a fantastic person. Uh, he really pushed me, and, and, and um, it was really interesting because he, he was so instrumental because uh, he knew that I didn't start in a lot of movies. I started in, uh, I co starred in, in Shooter and, and World Trade Center, and then maybe another movie. So it was always like four, three years apart, you know what I mean? And then and the watch came about, and you know he would say like, "Dude, do that thing we were doing in the in the, in the rehearsal." Like he had no ego, you know. He didn't he didn't care if somebody did well, you know. Or he's like, "This is your scene, dude. You should totally do it, man. Come on." And you know, really pushing me. And we'd go out jogging and stuff. And he, he's super competitive, right? You know, um, hell of a runner. Um, I could never keep up, but um, it, it, you know, it was that healthy competition, you know, and uh, and then the movie came out, and I remember my my wife just hugged me so hard. She she thought it was um, she was really proud of that movie and that performance, and I you know I poured my heart you wow. know, into it, and um, it's just like sports in a way where where if you work on a bunch of things that you think are getting you to the right direction. Um, at the end of the day, at least you're going to be proud of what you've done, what right. you've accomplished, you know. Um, and so that was one. Ant-Man was another. Um, let me see. That uh, you know, Cesar Chavez, you know, was another movie. Um, there, there, there's a there's a bunch, man. I've been I've been really blessed with uh, having some some really cool projects and working with some really cool people along the way. 
Right, that's amazing. Yeah. So like along the way, is there like one particular person who you thought was like, oh my, I can't believe that person was in my life that helped me progress the way you progressed? There's a lot of people. I mean, it, it, you know, from the beginning, I remember this guy, Glenn Haynes, really helped me out. Allison Jones, Karen Ray, uh, you know, Bradley Cooper's helping me out. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Peter Siegel, um, you know, the, all these men and women along the way that like, that have helped me out. And it's not, you know, they're, they're so vivid in, 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 in my memory, you know, like, because of you know they all helped me out in different ways like Oliver Stone for instance like hiring me out of nowhere right. you know to, to star in this movie I'm like what that's crazy I'm like does he got the right guy um, like that was big you know so it, it it was it was a lot of different different people you know that's amazing is yeah. there one thing you would do all over like differently looking back on it you know what I differently what I would do. Um, I, 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 yeah, there is. I'm like, I, if it makes any sense, I would be more disciplined in in my life, and I would be more disciplined about studying, you know. And um, you know, a kid's gonna be a kid or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, I feel like with just a little bit more discipline, it would have happened. Though I think a little bit sooner, and I would have had more confidence. And and I like, if you're working on the right things. I'm sure you find it with your students. When you're working on the right things, practice becomes a joy, you know. For sure. Especially when you're like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish this, you know. Um, I, you know, so set my goals up, so so that I can I can accomplish them and be real with them. You're like, you know what? I was better at memorizing my lines. Cool. I'm like, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. You know what? I was a little bit quicker in, in breaking down the script. Cool. Um, I was I used my 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 uh, my voice a little bit better. Great, you know I was movement a little bit better. These are all things that anybody can do that wants to be an actor um, that are kind of the basics, you know. And you can look up I don't know like ten basic books about acting, and they all might say it differently, but there's some common threads amongst it, you know, which I'm sure is the same way with business and. You know, with with sports, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, learning the basic fundamentals right. um, gives you kind of an end game. It gives you a goal, not an end game, but like it gives you a, a real a, a goal that you can accomplish. Right, right. You know? So how did you how did you um, develop your discipline and tell yourself how did twenty year old you develop your discipline? How did thirty year old you develop your discipline? Yeah, for me it was like having a kid. Um, <laughs> really, it was because I'm like, okay, we're not laughing anymore. Like this is. I gotta, I gotta put food on the table. Right. How old were you when you had your kid? Um, it was like, I was like 32. Gotcha. Yeah, so I, uh, I, you know, I really started thinking about, wow, I can't just like, eh, whatever, I didn't get the job, okay. I'm like, and just, you know, because I was living in a shoebox, you right. know. And, uh, you know, wasted some opportunities away, you know. Um, I couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> so I, uh, I started studying and then, you know, you find the, the love of what you're doing the more and more you do it, you know. There's different things that I, I, I love about it now. Now when I, you know, I, I just uh, I did a movie with Clint Eastwood and, I, you know, and I worked with Ridley Scott on The Martian, you know. Oh. And then you look at those guys and you're like, there's a different appreciation that I have now for them because they've made so many good movies and it's so hard <laughs> to do a good movie. Making, making good movies like winning a golf tournament. You right. know what I mean? Everything's got to come together, which is so hard. You can put in one round that's really good, two rounds that are good, but like those guys, like putting four rounds together is a complete like movie, so to speak, right? right? And it's so tough to do that. And they did it so many times. There's so many Tiger Woods of cinema, you know? Right. And it's not an accident, you right. know? Any of those wasted opportunities that you regret, like a really big regret, you're like, holy shit, I can't believe like, I waste it in a way. In a way, you know what? I don't. I don't have any major regrets because um, some of the things I just wasn't ready for. Um, you know, like, like I, what? I, I remember, I, I I just didn't know what I was doing. Like I got hired in Felicity. I mean, Felicity was a, a TV show by J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves, and this amazing part. And I had a great audition, but in reality, I didn't know what to do. You know, I just had one way of doing it and I didn't know it's that you know my job is really to to propel the story 
and use my character to tell this story, what they were doing. I didn't know any of that, you know? And and it, it's like, it's, and I keep going back to golf because we just had some right, lessons right. or whatever. But like, if you're just using chipping technique and trying to use a chipping technique or whatever, making sure that you got real contact and you're like, you have no real feel for, for length, you know, then it, what's good a, is, a, is a chipping technique if you hit it perfect all the time, but you're always short or right. long, you know? And so I, uh, you know, once you start working on a technique or something so that you, you can get to your target, then it changes, you know? And that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's why golf is so much fun. I say you love golf. Yeah, I, I really do. I really do. That's amazing. You know, especially when I was broke. You know, and, and how did you play golf when you were broke? Well, because what's great is that you can, you know, you find some like you golf and you golf and you golf, and then you have these bad, you know, balls that have scrapes and stuff, and you like you just put them in the bag, and then you just put them in the bag, and pretty soon you can go out and chip and putt and practice on your own, and you know, I didn't have any money for for lessons or whatever, um, so I read you know a book on uh, like a Ben Hogan, you know, that was yeah, that was yeah. like a used book was like five sixty something like that, then I was like, oh yeah, moving the big big muscles, that makes sense. You know, little things, and then you, you can, you know, go on a month long journey with just this little book. And there was a lot of good things that came out of that, right. you know? Right. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, where I was, like in LA, there's so many courses that like, you can play for 25 bucks. And of course, it's gonna be like a seven hour round, <laughs> but at least you could do it. Of course. You know? Course. And 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 then also like when you're starving, you you spend twenty five bucks on something, and you spend six seven hours, and your stomach is, is growling, but you're like you're okay because you you're golfing and you're keeping your mind off it, and then you you can only eat maybe twice a day or something like that. Right. And so that serves as a good distraction. That's amazing. Yeah. What's what's the biggest lesson or the best lesson you think that you've learned over your acting career that has that you think is like really helped you? It, you know, it's crazy, but you know how they say learn from your mistakes? Um, yeah, that's really cool. But I also think like learn from your successful actions. You know, there's, um, um, there's people that like, that are like, and I saw it all the time, especially with, you know, the young actors where, where I grew up, you know, they would do like these really cool characters and and it would be amazing and all of a sudden they would get a big part and stop doing all that stuff that made it so cool, you know? Um, and then I somehow like, I, I thought to myself, you know what's funny? It's almost like, it's almost like as if McDonald's was always really famous for these, these cheeseburgers and hamburgers and all of a sudden people started liking the Big Mac and they stopped serving the hamburgers and cheeseburgers. So they stopped their successful actions. Um, I always, now I think, let's, ex let's expand, you know, just like we did with our lesson today. You know, we, we expanded on what we had. Right. That didn't mean that we changed what we knew was right, you know? And so, um, I, I like the word expansion more than I like change, Amazing. you know, like so you expand on like, on like a good basic. Right, um, right. And, and, you know, if you're known for comedy, um, still do the comedies or still do this, you know, or whatever, and then expand and start doing other kind of movies as opposed to changing all together and then you forget about that person. Right, right. Is yeah. there one habit that you have preparing for roles or as you're growing as an actor that really helped you stay present, stay focused? Yeah, I mean, I, I think really is the time. Um, you got to fall in love with the story, you know, um, fall in love with the overall message of the story. And, and just the time in it. I, I'm just terribly interested in, in, in these stories and, and the, like I'm fascinated by how did, how did you come up with this? And then, like I said, I talk to the, to the writer all the time and I'm just fascinated by that because I'm not a writer. So when somebody does something, you know, and writes something that's amazing, I just read this amazing, um, this amazing script. It's called Menu. Uh, I don't know if, if it's gonna change. And I, I remember reading it and I was like, wow. Laying back in my bed, this is like, how did you come up with this thing? There's so many, this guy literally, and there was two guys, they, they grabbed like, uh, you know, all like, I can't tell you the specifics, but like this, of all, they're super specific on this, um, on, on this profession 
and they added it to this to this uh, subject matter that has nothing to do with each other and in the middle is is the story and I was like oh it was amazing and it, I know it's going to get nominated you know That's and amazing. you could just tell that you're like wow this is, if you do it halfway right it's going to be amazing amazing so like to, to end off this interview like what's one thing that you would say to like aspiring actors people actresses trying to make it in your industry like what's one thing that you could impart your wisdom on that could help them potentially make it yeah you know what i for me um and i don't i don't know if it's true for everybody but um for me there has to be that one reason that you really want to do something and nine times out of ten um if you just want to be in, involved in like really great stories you know that's awesome if you want to be a good actor um that's another if you want to you know act with great people like and be a part of it that's one thing but the the one thing where i i did see it i mean that's a good thing but the one thing where i i did see how people fell off is when they went for money gotcha it's so weird because you're they're never going to be happy right they can make 10 million dollars and they're like yeah whatever what am i doing this for 11 million dollars <laughs> and and there's people that are really rich that are really um not happy you know and uh you know, even when I was broke, I was doing cool movies. I'm like, I was really proud of that, you know, and as a as a as a broke kid. <laughs> um, and so th there, there's something to be said that like, you know, you provide a, a good product, and you know, sometimes a good performance that people like to see is a good product. You know, um, if you can, like you, like you, you change people's swings, and and they're so much happier when they're when they're playing. That's a good product. You know, um, but if somebody was after the money, they're like, okay, cool, man. Yeah, yeah, just work on that. Like, when's the next lesson that I can get you in, man? I think, I, you know, because they want more money. Right, you right. could feel it and it feels kind of weird. And we all know those guys, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, I don't know, man. I'm like, don't, <laughs> don't you think I'm, oh, he's watching, t his, you know, YouTube or whatever. You know, like, you can tell that there's a different flow, you know, but when you really want to, you know, be a part of the big game of whatever it is that you're doing, Life is 10 times better. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for that, Michael. Yeah, dude, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you for, it so yeah. much, Michael. You gave me some great lessons <laughs> today. Well, hopefully this uh, interview has helped some people, whoever watches, just help you guys push to be the best uh, best version of yourself. Um, so any questions, just leave it in the comments below. I'll try my best to get back to you. Though. Thanks, guys.